Glory to God. All right, let's go to God's word. Let's go to God's word. We began a discussion last week, you remember? I spoke on what last Sunday? City changers. I want to thank you for that. And I said that the Lord has given me a word to share. And I want to just share that word with you this morning. I want to try as much as possible to be as short as I can, very precise. Amen. The Lord bless you for believing God in me. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in Romans 13 verse 11, I want to read the New International Version. If you are playing the keyboard, you have to go very, very low. I don't want to sing. And there's a way it gets to me and I start singing. And then we get... Won't live here today. <laughs> Amen. All right. Can you see us wearing resurgence? Resurgence is coming. A move of God is coming. An awakening is coming. Somebody, I come to announce to you that an awakening is coming. That a wave of glory is coming. I said it's waves upon waves upon waves upon waves upon waves upon waves of his glory. Resurgence is coming. Hallelujah. From the 12th day of December to the 15th day of December, we start on Thursday with an Holy Ghost rally by 5 p.m. Is it 4.30 p.m.? 4.30 p.m. tonight. On that, I said tonight. On that night, it's going to be heaven or not. Tell your friends. Listen, if your boss is not giving you your leave, uh, resign. I'm telling you. A better one is coming. You cannot afford to miss that awakening. Are you following what I'm saying? We are going to begin to take testimonies of what happened at last resurgence so that you can get what we are talking about. You understand what I'm saying? Next week, we will have somebody who will share a testimony of what happened to him at, ha, at last resurgence so, so that you can get what we are talking about. Amen. So that's, that's one. So 12th and then 13th, it's a Friday, two sessions. We start by 9 a.m., we finish by 1, and then we go again by 3, and then Saturday we come again. It's going to be back-to-back -back waves of glory. I want to see the demon that has been following you, that will not leave you that day. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't forget, as a church, from the first day of December, we begin to fast. We begin to wait on the Lord, preparing the way for 2025. It's going to be a glorious awakening. It's going to be waves upon waves upon waves upon waves upon waves of His glory. Invite your friends. You can get this shirt at the back. You can get a shirt at the back. You can even buy 20. I say, I want to just give my friends. Compel them to come. It's going to be heaven on earth. You follow what I'm saying? Resurgence. Start fasting. Start writing your prayer points. Start writing what you are believing God for. Are you understand, do you understand what I'm saying? You have friends who are sick. Tell them you will follow me. Your healing is happening that day. In the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 13 verse 11 NIV New International Version today. The Bible says 13, 11 and do this understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. Help me touch your neighbor. Say the hour has come. The hour has come. Look at your next favorite neighbor and say the hour has come. For you for you to wake up from your slumber in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus because our salvation is nearer than when we first believe go very quickly to the book of revelations revelations are you there revelations chapter 3 how can you be there when I've not even told you <laughs> glory to God Revelations 3 verses 14 to 21. The Bible says, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. They are, sorry, I'm, I'm, in, I'm Revelations 2. Revelations 3, 14 to 21. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds. God knows you. He said, I know your deeds. That you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, I told you before I don't like lukewarm tea. It's either you are hot. I don't even take cold tea. 
it has to be hot, no matter the temperature. Tea must be served hot. If it is cold, it is not for me. If it is lukewarm, I pour it away. I would rather take water. Listen, God is saying, I have no use for lukewarm believers. It's like that tea and PFA. God is saying, you have to be hot. He said, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Say, God forbid. He said, I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I can't say you to come from me, gold, uh, refined in a fire so you can become rich. Uh, and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness. Uh, and serve to put on your eyes uh, so that you can see. Let's go further. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, how come in and hit with that person and deal with me? To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious, I sat down with my father on his throne. Hallelujah. For a few minutes this morning, I'd like to share with you what I've tied to spiritual lethargy. Spiritual lethargy spiritual lethargy. Shall we pray? Father, thank you. Because the entrance of a word we give light, give understanding to us simple folks. Father, we have come to learn under your feet. At your feet. Shine your light upon our heart. Reveal that which is hidden. Let us see our true state. Run a diagnosis over our spirits. Let us see who we are, oh God. Lord, after now, oh God, let's walk according to your counsel. Let your purpose for sending your word be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, and amen. Somebody be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. Spiritual lethargy. Many people are in church, but a few people are alive spiritually. Many have lost their joy. Some have lost their fire. Some have lost the workings of the giftings of the Spirit, so they share stories and testimonies of how they used to walk in the Spirit many years ago. Some have lost their hope. Nothing thrills them again. They just come to church. They are here to mark a Sunday. They are in church for religion. Some are serving, yet they no longer have a burning candle in their spirit. Some have become lost. They don't even know or have a way back to the Father. If this describes you, God sent me to you this morning. If you are saying, you know what, brother? That does not fully capture my state. But there is something in me that knows God wants more for me. Then God also sent me to you this morning. Jesus gave me a word for you. The Spirit bred upon me a message for you. And i like to share it with you. Today i like to deal with something that affects all churches. Many Christians, including pastors and leaders. It's a malady. It's a sickness. And it's called spiritual lethargy. Spiritual lethargy is the church number one enemy. More people leave God's church because of spiritual lethargy than for any other reason. They just say, I don't get it anymore. I don't know why I come to church. I don't even know what we get in church. So they stop coming. It first of all starts coming once in one week, once in two weeks, sorry. Once in four weeks, and then they just stop coming at all. Why? Because they do not find a relevance for coming to church. It does nothing, absolutely nothing to their spirit man. So they cannot find a reason to come to church. Many people have been disfellowship, Not because uh, they were out in the church, but because their fire has burned out. They have been disfellowship. Uh, because they have fallen, they have failed to find a relevance for the reality of Christ. Many people say, you know, when I was younger, I used to pray. But by growing up, I found out that all of those things does not matter. What comes to us, comes to us. I don't need to pray. Things happen by just what we be, will be. It's spiritual lethargy that took them to where they are. Listen, people don't die a spiritual death. They first of all end, end, enter into a place or a state of comatose, a state of lethargy, and then it gets to a point uh, they no longer find their fire anymore. Israel got to a state they cried out, where is the God that our fathers spoke about? Where is the God of our fathers? If it is so, why are we under so much bondage? Why are we oppressed? 
spiritual lethargy is something we all must fight against. Listen, dear friend, you must overcome it. It must not overcome you. Don't assume it can't happen to you. Listen to this sermon with zeal, with zest. Share yourself with God's abundant spirit. Be sure to make your calling and election sure. A lethargic believer is a believer in danger of falling away. As a lethargic believer. A true believer must be alert. He must be on fire for God. If you are not on fire for God, you are in danger because you are at risk of the devil. What is spiritual lethargy very quickly? I give you seven definitions here so that you never lose it. You never forget it. What is the purpose of coming to Ransom House if I didn't teach, if I don't teach it well? Grounded in doctrine. Not just one definition. I give you seven. Number one, spiritual lethargy may be defined as a state of indifference or inertia with regard to your own spiritual growth and vitality. A state of indifference as it concerns your spiritual growth or vitality. You are no longer interested whether you grow or not. That's spiritual lethargy. It's a state of indifference. I don't care. You don't read the Bible, it does not affect you. You don't pray, it, you don't care. It's spiritual lethargy. Number two, spiritual lethargy is specifically a lack of energy. Spiritual lethargy is specifically a lack of energy or enthusiasm for spiritual life. A lack of energy for spiritual life. They say, let us pray, you start sleeping. As I begin to preach, you start sleeping. But if I was doing comedy, you will not sleep. That's a lack of life. Spiritual life. We lead prayer for 10 minutes. It looks like we have been there all day. Life. Number three is a place of little communion or little joy in the Lord. That's A.W. Tozer. Tozer said, spiritual lethargy is a state of no joy or no communion with the Lord. Listen, there is something we must carry. You came to church this morning. You saw praise and worship. There was so much joy. If you don't have that joy and you are wondering, why are they jumping like this? Why are they dancing like this? What is What in heaven's name is wrong with them? Then you are in a state of spiritual lethargy. Number four. Number four talks about a spiritual lethargic person. Is one who has lost passion and zeal in his or her spiritual life. Due to the lack of the influence of the Holy Spirit. Someone who does not have any work with the Holy Ghost. Someone who, who the Holy Spirit can no longer influence your decision. He cannot speak to you anymore. He cannot dictate your start and your stop. It's a state of spiritual lethargy. A state of laziness, slothfulness. As it contains the things of the Spirit. Number five. Spiritual lethargy is spiritual dullness. The iron axe, the axe edge has become blunt. Spiritual dullness, sluggishness, complacency, a lackadaisical attitude to spiritual things. When will you pray? I will pray. You can even sing, I will pray. Oh. If I no pray, Satan will make jest of me. We have had. Can we pray now? He said, are we pray? Are we pray? That background, the music is going every time. Are we pray? Are we pray? You have to pray. To pray is not singing. I've said that before. To pray is to pray. Somebody following what I'm saying? Dullness. You can't even pick signals in the spirits. God tells you, you are in danger with that guy. You can't see it because you are a man ruled by your emotions. So you come around and say, he broke my heart. God has been warning you from that guy for five years before he broke your heart. But you did not see it. Why? Because it's a state of spiritual dullness. You are here, you are saying, I've never had God speak to me. Spiritual lethargy. You are here, you are saying, God spoke to me when I was in 400 level last. And it's been seven years since you graduated. Spiritual lethargy. Lagos has happened to you. Number six. It is a malady, a sickness that kills your joy. And robs you of growth, intimacy in God. 
Romans chapter 13 verse 11. The Bible says not lacking in diligence, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. According to a research by church administration department in the United States of a denomination, they said the greatest single problem in the church today, as evidenced by the visiting reports and the reasons for which members are disfellowship, is lethargy. Clarified further, I say, who home? What's the use? I quit. Let's not get excited about it. I can't. It's not important anyway attitude. The attitude that says, it's not important. The attitude that quit on the things of God. You normally before fast once a week, twice a week, but you have quit. You no longer do that. You've given up. It's a state of spiritual lethargy. Just as we read in Revelations about the Laodicean church, we are at a more risk of getting into spiritual lethargy in times of comfort than in times of pressing needs. Have you found out that you and God are closer when you are desperate? Poor people are on fire. Because that is their only choice. God is their only hope. When they wake up in the middle of the night, they don't sleep back. Because it is hot already. There is no air condition. There is nothing. They just start praying. When they wake, they wake. You, you wake up like seven times. And you say it's 7 o'clock and you have been praying, but you know that since 2 a.m. till 7, you can't remember one thing that happened. It's lethargy. The Laodicean church said, I've become wealthy. I've become rich. I have need of nothing. Lethargic believers are people who are hither cold nor hot. And what the resurrected Christ said is very simple. In verse 17, he said, thou are wretched and miserable. Poor, blind, and naked. This is the diagnosis of the resurrected Christ about these people. He said, they are wretched. Listen, you may have good cars. You may have a good job. Jesus' diagnosis of your life right now is that you are wretched and you are miserable. I didn't say that. Revelation chapter 3 verse 17 says it. So when I we close service, ensure you greet me. This is the diagnosis of the Christ. We don't get angry when doctors diagnose us. We ask for solutions. This is the report. Jesus said you can do better. Many in God's church are just too lazy to overcome. In today's technology, fast-paced society, negative influence abound around us. The only effect of so much social media is that you become a lethargic believer. Because your intake will determine your health state. The old computer word, language is still true. Giggle. Garbage in, garbage out. Most of our free time are used watching football. Watching streaming services. Don't let me call their names. Streaming movie services. On our mobile phones and devices, the only time you leave your phone is when it dies. Is the reason God has not helped you to have a new phone. You know, sports, recreation, vacation, workplace can rob you of, of, of your spiritual vibrancy. Sunday is the only time I have to rest. So I go and play football. I'm sure as you are coming to church today, you saw many people playing football. They have been to church before. It's lethargy that makes them choose football than God. If you don't want to one day choose, choose movie over church, you have to keep your fervency. Can I tell you, somebody say, Pastor, it's okay. I've had. In fact, these things you are saying is making me afraid of myself, sir. So, you know what we do? We are denying now. Some of us are saying, it's not that bad. I'm not in any spiritual lethargy. I know myself. I know I've been praying. If I'm on fire. Okay? So, let me give you signposts to show whether 
you are in spiritual lethargic states. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Signs you are experiencing spiritual lethargy. Number one, you have lost your joy and your zeal for the things of God. Psalm 51 verse 12, David came to that understanding. He said, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. He knew that something was getting wrong. Something was not in the state it ought to be. He said, God, walk for me. Walk with me. Number two, you no longer function in your spiritual gifts and graces. You have stories of God's working yesterday than today. See, ah, Pastor, you see, when I was in, this, was, this should be around 2014, I had a vision, Jesus, and, and that's just normal. Before it happened, Jesus shows me. And then I'm thinking, did he, has he shown you anything in the last 10 years? Is a state of spiritual lethargy. Israel shouted, we no longer see our signs. It's a state of spiritual lethargy. Number three, you keep giving excuses rather than practice spiritual discipline. Anytime, instead of praying, you give excuses. I, I ask you, how far? Your devotion. You say, Pastor, things are hard. To, you, you see how things are going. I've had to double up my effort. I'm, I've been online and all of that. Instead of spiritual discipline, you are giving excuses. It's a sign that you are in a spiritual lethargic state. It's a sign. Some people are identifying themselves now. Amen. You know, doctors don't know so much. They ask you questions. When you say you have a headache, they say, is it from here or from here? And then is it from here? And then when does it come? And is it banging you or is it like they are doing clock on your head? All right? So is it a bell ringing? All of that has taught them to be able to diagnose the, what you are going through. I'm showing this so that you also, as a spiritual medical student, can begin to diagnose, not medical, a spiritual student, tell what is going on with you. Number four, chronic indulgence in sinful thoughts and actions. Masturbation. Pornography. You don't do any of it. But you spend 30 minutes just infatuating about a lady. The lady is not even your girlfriend. She just greeted you. She's a neighbor. But you can spend hours just infatuating about her. Sinful thoughts and actions have taken a hold of your mind. And that's not just, you know, when we say, you, a lady, lady, we make it look like it's only men that have lost issues. It can also be the woman also. It's a sign. Very quickly. Number five. Indulgement, indulgence and engagement in exclusively Christless entertainments. When you look at how you spend your waking moments, 14 hours a day, you sleep for 10 hours. Or let's say you 16 hours a day, you work 8 hours. What do you do with the remaining 8 hours? Lifeless, Christianless entertainment. Number 6, an avoidance of personal accountability. Your sister asks you, where are you coming from? Are you my mother? Your mom asks you, where have you been since morning? You say, mom, I'm old enough. Accountability is a sign of responsibility. When you avoid personal accountability, Somebody asks you, when was the last time you prayed in tongues for 30 minutes? You say, it's not about praying. Then it, what is it about? You know when people say that, what is it about? It's not about praying. Okay, is it about shawarma or dancing? What is it about? The spiritual life is about spiritual discipline. Okay? Don't let anybody undermine spiritual discipline to you. That person does not love you. He's trying to destroy your life. Spiritual discipline is important. Number seven, as decrease or zero appetite for personal Bible reading and Bible study. Zero appetite for Bible reading and Bible study. Zero appetite. You want to study your Bible, the reason you sleep is because you are not delighted when you open the Bible. You open it like pastor said we should read it. Zero appetite. A decrease. Number eight, 
reluctant and sporadic church attendance. When we will see you next? Ah, pastor, you see me next week. And then the next time we see you is next month. Spiritual lethargy. Can't you come early to church? There are, I want to, but there are a hundred reasons I cannot. Can I ask some of us who come late to church, when was the last time you praised God and danced? I think that's a very valid question. Or you don't think that it's not worthy to be praised. Even our, our forefathers who did not know Christ, they will, have, they will go and worship or battle or whatever it is they worship and praise it. Not it because there's nothing there. It's just a demon backing it up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number nine, a decreased appreciation and value for the truth. You don't appreciate the truth anymore. It's a sign. Number 10, little or no desire to pray and seek God's presence. Little or no desire to pray and seek God's presence. Somebody said, your life is not working. Say, it will work. It will work. There's nothing that is working in this nation. You know, there, is, there are things we say to ourselves that just encourage us. The day you decide to change your life, I tell many people, your life will change. The day you own your life, your life will change. Change your attitude. Change your attitude. Number 11, a lack of desire to be active in service to God and in the household of faith. A lack of desire to be active. Me, I can't do work as I, We have done that still. We are old enough for that. We are too old for that. Now, now by that, check those, check, the, check it. 11. What's your score? What's your score? What's your score? Okay. Listen, despite the fact that you mark it yourself and you favor yourself, you still score 3 over 11. Your state is spiritual lethargy. <laughs> despite the fact that you mark it yourself, you still score 7 over 11. Spiritual lethargy. We are not saying you will not make heaven. But there is danger at the door. You mark it yourself, you see score 8 over 11. There is danger at the door. Somebody say, I cannot even mark anything. Because it is ter- it's, oh, it's more serious than what you think, pastor. Because you don't even want 1 over 11. Then, you need to be born again. When I make the altar call, you need to come forward. Give your life to him again. Now, can I show you instigators of spiritual lethargy? What are the things that drives spiritual lethargy? What are the things that cause spiritual lethargy? Am I helping somebody? As you see, today I'm not sharing so much stories. I just want to get the job done. By next week, we'll continue with our stories. Amen. Uh, personal examples. Because that one, you'll be chilled. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Instigators of spiritual lethargy. Number one. Pride and self-centeredness. As it is the case with all sin, spiritual laziness finds its root in our pride. We believing that we don't need anyone is pride. You believe that myself is enough. is an elevation of self above God. When you find a man who does not pray is a sign of pride. Because he is saying, I am not dependent on anyone for my results. If you are dependent on God for your results, you would pray. Listen, every time you are not praying, anytime you are not vavent, anytime you are not developing in your work, in your koinonia with the Lord, is a sign of spiritual lethargy. And it's caused by pride. The Bible calls it thinking more highly of yourself, more than you ought to think. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. When our minds are captured by an exaltation of self, there is little room left for devotion. When someone likes himself too much and believes himself too much, there is no place for God. There is no place for God. Therefore, I tell people there are certain gimmicks they teach you. Motivational speakers or motivational speakers, whatever they are, that say, you know, speak to yourself. You are enough. I am this. And eventually what you do is that you fill yourself with so much of you that you have no place for God in your life. 
Am I saying you should not have confidence in what God has given you? Yes, do. Raising our own self-importance inevitably lowers the priority of pursuing Christ. Inevitably. It lowers the priority of pursuing Christ. Number two, toleration of pet sins. Note the word pet sins. You know we have pets. Dogs. I, I, one of the sh- culture shock I found was when I came to the island. People, be, people had cats as pets. Where I was coming from, cats are owned by witches. I, I mean, that's the idea. But I got to the island and I found that people are giving cats milk. They take cats to uh, pet doctors. I'm like, are you vet doctors? Are you serious? You see cats, it looks so fluffy, so nice, so beautiful. As even if witches enter this cat, which will die. Because this kind of cat is too fine for a witch to survive. The same way those people treat their pets. They put their leg in the water sometimes. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't know how people manage these things. Is the, you see the dogs some people are carrying. And you see that they don't have so much money. I wonder, how are you? You are spending so much money on this dog than yourself. What's going on here? I don't know whether you have met them. There are plenty on the island. Sometimes they are entering water and they will carry that thing like this. And I'm like, what that thing spends in a year? Maybe if you even put it together, maybe you are for the car. I don't know. But people will say, I don't lock pets. Maybe that's it. But I don't know. But you know, the way they treat that pet, there are pet sins that you treat that way too. Sins you love. Sins you hide. Little, little foxes that spoils the vine. You say, you know what, man of God? I don't sleep around. I don't. But this drinking, nothing can take it from me. Now, the reason you get home and you cannot pray is that you are drunk. So, it is, you are going to sleep next. Say, Father in heaven, the next time you discover yourself, you are snoring. You are gone. Looking unto Jesus, Hebrews chapter 12, the author and the finisher of our faith. Fixing our eyes on him. The race is growing. It demands stamina. If you allow sin, it will destroy your work with Jesus. Number three, lesser distractions. Sin is not only the weight that hinders our run. The author, the author of Hebrews chapter 12 also identifies what he called encumbrances. He broadens his warning with every weight, every weight that so easily besets. Is the exertion of energy towards what is good, but it is not best. Some of the guys looking at me now, when we are watching the game of football, they are watching differently. Why? Because their money is in the game. They are bet. They say it's sport. It's not. It's pastor, don't preach against it. It's bet. It's the money I don't need. But after that match, you are angry. You are sad. Why? Because they are allowed them to score at the last minute. That is what spoiled that ticket. Weights that beset us. Do you know that video game can be a weight against your growing? Do you know that too much talk with that your friend can be a weight? Gossip can be a weight. There are friends you must cut away from if you are going to grow spiritually. The weight. It does not look like sin. It does not look harmful. But it's destroying your work with God. Some of you, you need to abandon your phone when you get home. You came back from work, you are not able to do anything at work, right? Spiritual. But then you got home now. And then you took your phone. You see, that's where I relax. I am tired. The next thing you discover is that you have been there for three hours. Am I speaking to somebody? You know, it's true. In Nigeria, people enter buses and they know that there is a lot of traffic time. And they watch movie from CMS, Marina, 
to Ajad, they are watching movie. They can even finish, depending on traffic, you can almost finish a limited edition. A limited series. So you've seen like it's four of them. Say traffic was bad today. <laughs> That's why I charge my phone. Your power bank is as big as your bag. What you don't understand is that your take in will affect your spirituality. You have taken in so much entertainment and infotainment that it has, it has dulled your spiritual acts. That is why it can no longer cut. This is the reason why we are in a state of lethargy. You cannot decide that because now God has blessed you and you now have a DSTV, you will watch all the premiership matches, all the football matches. Some people yesterday, they watched Barca Madrid. It started from Thursday. Sorry, on, from Tuesday. From Tuesday, they watch Champions League. Wednesday, they watch Champions League. Two, two matches. Uh, on, Wednesday, on Thursday, they watch Europa League. Um, two, two matches. Uh, on Friday, I still saw they were still playing. I don't know. I said, ah, I want to buy generation. Yeah, they have killed this generation. On Friday, there's another match. And then on Saturday, from the hours of 12 o'clock till 11 p.m., no dull moment. Back to back entertainment. You can't have that all your weekend. Plug it into you and you will have any spiritual energy. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. You, sh you have no reason to watch so much of that except you are making money from it. As somebody say, I bet. Those who win from bets don't watch it. This is your 2000 that you say you never use. If you have been putting it with one person, at Kuda, or, the, or, or that saving app they used to use. That piggy vest. If you have been putting that to 2000 in that piggy vest, at the end of this year, you would have been richer than you were last year. Number four, bad influences. You do not need to be Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes, sorry, you do not need to be Sherlock Holmes to detect the correlation between bad company and the corruption of good morals. The ambitions of the wicked are healed for ill-gotten gain, perversion, and folly. Solomon in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10 warned his son. He said, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Let me say this to you. Some of us need to drop our friends. Some of us, our companies will ruin us. By company, I don't mean the one you started with CAC. I mean that the company you work with. That is the reason why you are looking for the money for that week. You can't afford it. But the reason you are looking for it is that every day in your group, that's the kind of week they are using. Bad influences. Jesus asks, do you love me more than this? You've got to choose. Do you love those companies more than Jesus? Is somebody being blessed? Number five. Why? How do we get to this state? Fear of man. Proverbs 29 verse 25, the fear of man brings a snare. Sometimes some of us are not, can't pray where we are because we believe that they will label us. They say you pray too much. The fear of man. The snare of man. The snare of fear. The Christian race is personal. Have you heard me say it before that destiny is not emotional? Listen, purpose is personal. Destiny is not emotional. You must choose what you want to do with your life. Your Christian work is both personal, your life purpose isn't sentimental. If you don't choose, men will choose for you. There are people that choose their church for them. There are people that your friends choose when to sleep. You cannot give attention to internal transformation when you are concerned with external perceptions. What would they say about me? Great men don't think about what people say. They look at the focus and they keep pursuing it. Number six, improper and unmet expectation. Spiritual lethargy is caused by disappointments. I came to church, I pray, especially when we preach too much of God who gives and gets. So you come, as they told you, when you come to church, this will happen to you. So you came to church and you prayed and prayed and that did not happen to you. They say, when you come, you'll find us banned. 
And then you came. You wore trousers. You wore skirt. You say maybe the men what they like is skirt. You change it to skirt. They say maybe it's short. You change it to long. You, have, you say let me try trousers. Now you are try, you tried it. They say because you are not wearing wig. You start wearing wig. Say because you are not doing makeup. You start doing makeup. You've done everything you thought that this is the way. This is what to do, and nothing happens. Unmet expectation can cause lethargy. I confessed for a job. The job didn't come. Apostle Paul knew his infirmities. He had weaknesses. Don't lie to yourself. If your own expectation is affecting you, agree to it. By denial, nothing changes. Accept it and then walk on it. Number three, seven, physical exhaustion. If you are in the city of Lagos, this is the greatest danger to your spiritual valve. It is physical exhaustion. When you come back, I don't know, have you, have, you, have you returned before and you did not eat and you just discovered that you slept off? In fact, you didn't change. You just woke up suddenly like 2 a.m. and say, what? And then you check it. You just lay back. Physical exhaustion. I found out that nobody actually has the capacity to work for 18 hours a day. I found out that nobody actually in the real sense of it work for 16 hours a day. Nobody. The gist is that the time we have in between those times, we don't use it for spiritual things. That's our major issue. So I just return from work. I am tired as I am cooking. To eat, let me watch a movie. And as you watch that movie, it now has a sequel. So you say, ah! And you know, you can't even tell when these Nepal people will bring light again. So you watch another sequel. You just watch it. I found out that even those who are producing movies are now very unintentional about ending it early. In fact, if you check some of those streaming sites, there are categories of movies they call binge watching. That means it won't make so much sense, but it will take your time. So just keep watching. And some is sworn worthy. Just sworn worthy. You don't have a boyfriend, you don't have a girlfriend, you're just sworn in there. Sworn worthy. Just there. <laughs> That's why when the guy came to ask you out, you don't feel any sworn. So you say, it's, it, the guy does not love you. It's not, I, I feel no connection. K drama will destroy you if you don't destroy it. He's asking you out, say, hello. He say, ah, go swoon me. It's not sworn in me. It's not sworn in me. It's not it's tsunami that you will enter if you don't take care. Because many of us, we do not understand that we are being formed by infotainment. It's affecting your values. It's affecting your decisions. God will not increase 24 hours. It's still the same 24 hours. When you are physically exhausted, it's because you kept what should have been done today and you shifted it to tomorrow. And because you kept doing that, now you are overloaded even with things to do. If that is not the case, then you are not delegating. If that's not the case, then you are in the wrong job. You are on the wrong job. I hope you know there are jobs that you will, you are, is for survival. It's not for thriving. I think we have to start telling ourselves that in church. Listen, if all the jobs you have gotten since you've been in Lagos has been survival jobs, apart from people praying for you and you saying amen, I'm betting, I'm thinking by betting you can go up or sleeping, with somebody, so you think that's all you go up. I want to advise you get a skill that will help you to go up. What the job you are getting is because that is your level. If you increase your level, I found out even as a lady, when you add to your ND, the guys that come to you are no longer mechanics and ND. Somebody say, If well attendant asks me out, are you okay? You see, the reason if well. No, there are people who fail attendant will not ask out. It's, it's not, it's not, all this, uh, you see, people who always ask me, I need, I need deliverance, pastor, it's a lie. There are people who fail attendant will never ask out. But you see, if you are just finished secondary school, a fail attendant will ask you out because he also did SSC. Increase your level and increase the people who come to you. Spiritual lethargy is because we don't prioritize time. That's why you are exhausted every time. 
Why on earth should you be thinking of eating pandediam in the middle of the week? Why? Why on earth should you be eating shawarma by 1 a.m.? Why would you not be physically exhausted? You know, it's important because some people like 3 a.m. today, they, they took it. And, and so they will now say, oh, my stomach is bursting. How will it not get big? Where will the food go to? Now, if you put yourself, how, see, spiritual lethargy is caused sometimes by our lifestyle. It's not the devil. But how can you take seven wraps of fufu by 9 p.m. and you want to pray in the middle of the night? Which prayer? Now, it's not possible. Why? Because your body system is even trying to process that kind of carbohydrates. Now you wake up, you are more tired than when you slept. You said that there are demons that visited you and were running on you. The demon was the fufu. Ask doctors, they will tell you when you are tired, there's no food you need. It's sleep. It's sleep. Do you know that your food can induce nightmare? I'm telling you. Your food can induce. I don't know what you are doing with your life. Your body is tired. Tired. So it means it will be difficult to break things down. Yet you sat down because you can afford it. You can afford it. And you hate. You did it therefore? No. The effort they gave you was one spoon. That is one thing that can help you process it. One spoon of effort. With 10 wraps of a bar. Ow! You see some people, what they put in front. No. You can't wake up and pray. You wake up angry. This is not demonic. This is our lifestyle. This is why we don't have advancing. I said last week, Smith Wiggles was with, stand up from the bed. I said, hallelujah, it's a great day. You can't eat 10 wraps of a bar. And wake up and say, hallelujah, it's a great day. Nibo. Until you go to the restroom. Sometimes. You don't need so much food for survival. You, the reason, that's why they say, leave food and touch God. Somebody say, you know, I'm not, I'm, I don't eat that much. It's because you can't afford that much. A physically tired person is unlikely to be mentally alert. Not to talk of being spiritually alert. A physically exhausted person is emotionally unstable. Do not walk yourself to death at the cost of becoming slothful in your devotion. Don't stop working when your energy has, gone, has finished. When it is almost finishing, spend time in prayer. Prioritize your devotion with God. Somebody listening to me. <laughs> Number eight. Life's sorrow. Like physical fatigue, heartbreak can make you angry. You see, I call it life's sorrows, not because somebody died. But when somebody, when somebody you love walk out of your life, it's worse than somebody dying. I don't know whether true people come to, came to church this morning. Especially if that person, you have been giving the person time. He never asked you out. But he was, he was there. He was there. Always there. He was, I tell people, it's not until you ask a lady out that you are dating. I love your clothes. Last week one was even better than this. This is awesome. You are telling her, I'm looking at you. I'm aware you exist. And then you now see her say, and you were not a midweek last Sunday. What happened? On Wednesday, what happened? You are already saying, and then you now looked at her and said, I hope you'll be around for midweek this Sunday. It's coming to midweek to meet with Jesus, but also to meet with you. So when she dresses, she dresses with you in mind, especially when she likes you. So please stop being a fool. It's not until you ask a woman out that you are actually dating a woman. 
You send that message, I love you, I miss you. And yet you have not asked her out. You now gave her a card and said, I am getting married. Now, I am now, pastor now says she has to be spiritually fervent. What kind of God allows that to happen to his daughter? It's not God. It's the sons of men. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? Life sorrows. Ability not to pay your house rent. Life sorrow. The one who funds your life, walked out of your life. A lady got in touch with me and said, I can't go on. I said, why do you say you can't go on? He said, he's no longer picking my call. I said, who? He said, my pastor. I said, it's no longer. He said, block me everywhere. I said, it's good. I said, praise God. I told my wife, I said, praise God. I said, move on. Your hope should not be on your pastor. It should be on Jesus. Who built this kind of faith into you? Let it be on Jesus. He said, I can't do it. She's the one, he was the one that made me know I was somebody. When that person left, spiritual lethargy set in. If all of you have been truthful, you will know that there are times in your life, seasons of your life, and some of you are in those seasons right now, that life sorrow made you lose your spiritual fervency. I've shown you what caused it. Let me end this sermon very quickly right now. By equipping you, how do I overcome spiritual lethargy? Somebody want to overcome? Somebody want to overcome? I can't hear you. Somebody want to overcome? Yes, Number one, prioritize spiritual discipline and routine. In the spiritual, routine is a blessing and not the enemy. We grow by the routines we keep in spiritual disciplines of prayers, Bible study, and worship. You must have a time when you pray. Can I say to you guys, uh, you must have a time when you pray. Telling yourself, I will pray when I am free, you will not pray. You must tell yourself, I pray 5 a.m. every day. I pray 6 p.m. every day. Look at your body anatomy. Look at your anatomy. Look at your schedule. And because some people are night people. They don't sleep until they want to sleep. But some people, when it is 8 o'clock, if you are talking to them, they are just, they are just going. Right? Because they are not night people. Okay, I can see that. You showed me that sign. I saw that. And some people are not night. Uh, some people are day people. Know who you are. Don't say, pastor said we must pray at night. And you know that you, you and night have never seen each other. God does not sleep. God does not slumber. Somebody say pray because witches are more active at night. Do they say your prayer is like mortal combat? So that when I pray, when they're active, he's going and attacking each other. What kind of nonsense is that? The most important thing is to have a repetitious and consistent prayer life. Jesus said, 18.1, men ought always to pray and not of faint. He said, pray without ceasing. You've got to have a time when you pray. A time when you study the Bible. Don't look at yourself. You come home 8 o'clock and you know your kind of work. They have used you. You now carry the Bible, lie down on the bed and start reading it. Then I say, pastor, every time I read the Bible, I sleep off. It's million 5 or is it 9 or 10 or 20? Why? Because you are tired. But when you wake up in the morning like my wife, she wakes up like somebody who has never slept. I just look at her and say, I can just close off the lights, off the light, off the light. Don't use perfume, just use it outside. See, I'm, I'm still sleeping. And some of us, when we wake up, we wake up instrumentally. I wake up at, at, at first, there is, I wake up at first, maybe 4 a.m. I wake up at second, 4.30. I wake up finally, 5 o'clock. That is waking up at last. That time you talk to me, I'm conscious. My wife tell me, when we got married, she does not really talk to me in the morning. Because in the morning, I am hungry. I look angry, I look sad. I just don't know what is going on. But at night, I want to talk about everything and she wants to sleep. I want to talk. You see, I'm telling you marriage now. I want to talk. You see, 
Oh, don't come. I want to sleep. I say, ah, I'm just in you. I'm excited. In the morning, she's excited. I'm looking like kilo shelly. What, what, what are we chasing? I will be a fool. Not to then say, that I will be reading my Bible by 5 a.m. It's not possible. But she will wake up. Four o'clock. I look at her. Reading my Bible. Say, ah, how are you doing this thing? That come. I've gone. I can't do that because I can't comprehend at that time. For 12 a.m., we are still awake. House on fire. Yesterday, some boy went to bed dark. I, I, I sleep when I want to sleep. I have conquered sleep. I sleep when I want to sleep. But see, when I sleep, except on Sundays, if I sleep one hour, I sleep 4 a.m. on Sunday, by 5 a.m., my heart is racing, but my eyes is open. That these people, they will hear the word of God. At my eyes is open. But apart from Sundays, it's a covenant. Apart from Sundays, it's a labor. It's a labor. Know who you are. Have a time. Write it down. I will have a time of prayers. Don't let your work choose for you. Work your schedule into that time. Many of us work our spiritual devotions into our schedule. We are supposed to work our schedule into our spiritual devotions. Somebody understand what I'm saying here? There is no laying on of hands for spiritual abundance. You see all this? Catch fire. Catch fire. We lay hands. You fall down. All those things are manifestations for Instagram. Listen. You will not burn for God if there is no consistency in your life. Somebody lay hands on me, I I born, I born, I born. Okay? After that laying on of hands, you must now begin a, a discipline, a devotion of continuous being in the presence of God. That's what we say. I can set you on fire. You will have to maintain your fire. You come to resurgence, I set you on fire. Haven't I told you before? Praise God. A lady came to our meeting, was under the anointing for hours. Hours. Couldn't see, couldn't walk, couldn't talk. We carried her home. After she woke up, I was very interested. What happened to you? I saw Jesus. Every time you were there, he was at the right side. I saw Jesus and he took me with him. Wow. Three months later, she was in the house of a man. Sleeping there daily. Marijuana smoking. Fully gone. I have not seen Jesus like she saw. <laughs> Encounters are good, but it does not transform your life. There is the blessing of turning up daily. One thing I have is I turn up daily. I turn up daily. God told me, he said, the anointing upon your life, I won't give you once, is a measure. You come today. I, I understand it. I've been looking for the anointing for almost 10 years. Even if it's one spoon I'm taking every day, don't you think I will be anointed? Instead of you, they put one drum there, you have leaked everything away. It's like an engine, that the engine is leaking oil. Oil will be shot every day. We come to talk, give me oil in my life, give me oil. We, you take oil, it leaks again. Because as you got up, you are already sleeping with a man. God, I beg. Give me oil, give me bunny, give me bunny. You are crying, give me bunny, okay. Give me bunny. You won't go to Bunny Island. But the only way to burn consistently is to turn up daily. Tell your neighbor, turn up daily. Somebody listen to me. Let me give you two more. I have plenty here. My God. Jesus of Nazareth. Put your heart into God's work. That's one way to burn. Give the work of God your best. The Bible says in 12, 11 Romans. Not lacking in diligence. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. How do you know a fervent believer? He serves the Lord. What you serve tells me what you believe in. Whatever you prioritize, you will serve. One great sign for burning for God is that you will serve him. 
When you are not interested in serving God, you are cold. A sign that you are not involved with the king. Those who love the king are interested in the king and his kingdom. When your heart is in God's work, you will give it your time and resources. You know what I found out? When lethargy Christians see a believer who burns for God and serve God, they even gossip about them. So if somebody joins this church now and prayer meeting, the person is there. Early morning prayer meeting, the person comes. We come to pray, the person is there. And then I say, ah, pastor like that kind of a thing. So pastor become close to that person. He says, it's eye service. Other believers say, it's eye service. It's because he wants to become a pastor. It's because he wants to become a deacon. That's why. The reason you are angry is that that man is showing you the image you ought to be doing. That is your life. It is not you are angry because you are jealous. Now you could not place it, but I place it for you now. A woman joined our church. in a lorry. Always coming. Every morning, every morning prayer, she's there. Early morning prayer, she's there. Midweek service, she comes early. Sat, sits down. Before service starts. Before you know it, people started talking. Two years later, she was made a deacon. They said that's what she was looking for. How do you know what she was looking for? You crab. How did you know? They want people to be in church and not serve God's purposes. They are angry with people who are serving God's purposes. That's a sarkikos, a cannot believer. I know we don't have sarkikos in this church. Amen. Be zealous. Be on fire. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. 4.34 of the book of John. This is my meat. This is what I love to do. Number three, pray without season. There is no fervency without prayers. If we do not pray, we will not burn for God. Can I say that to you again? If we do not pray, we will not burn for God. Prayer is how that we keep refueling our spiritual tank. You've got to be a person given to prayer. Let me say this to you. Fire can go out. And fire does go out. The only way to maintain your fire is through prayers. A praying believer is a believer that is alive. A praying church is a church that is alive. The state of your spiritual health is directly proportional to the state of your prayer life. I said it to them yesterday. I said your alt, the state of your altar reveals the state of your spirit. The state of your altar reveals the state of your spirit. So look at your prayer life. That's how your spirit man looks like. Please, I beg you in the name of the Lord, help your spirit man survive. It's not in a good state. Pray some more. Number four, very quickly. I mean, Jesus lived a life of prayer. I can't go into all of that. Jesus lived a life of prayer. The apostles lived a life of prayer. They prayed. We also must pray. Number four, you must learn to fast regularly. Actually, may I ask you, when was the last time you fasted? I was speaking to one young man. I said, when was the last time you fasted? He said, maybe four years ago. I mean, how do people survive on that? You are applying for the same job. You are going for the same interview, bidding for the same business opportunities with people who are highly spiritual. With people that they have given them a perfume they should take every time. They are going for an interview. That instead of asking them questions, they are smiling at them. And you, they have told you, we are only taking one person. And you cannot pray. You cannot fast. See, if you don't leave this food, you will not touch God. You don't have ulcer, you are lying. It's just that every one of us, when we fast, our stomach pain us. I, I've not told you before. Our pastors don't say it's the truth. All of us, there are times when we fast that our stomach pain us. But we don't invite ulcer. You, you just pray once like this. You just fast like this. Something will hook you by 12 p.m. Something should hook you. Sometimes it's because it's been a long time you deworm. So they are the worms that are actually asking for food. Mm. Oh God. And I told Pastor, this is going to be difficult. This is going to be difficult. Ah. And then, when you fast, everything they sell becomes good and interesting. Even the one you don't use before. Everything is a sign of carnality, it's a sign of lethargy. 
I tell you, I don't heat so glass for puff. What kind of nonsense is that? But when I'm fasting and I'm driving, I look at that. Ah, this thing looks good, though. I swear I've been missing. But when I am not fasting, I don't see it. It's because your body is asking. Imagine if at that time I already had a pain and I say it was ulcer, and I now see a so glass for puff. You will park on an express road and heat so glass for puff. You will even wait to get chicken properly. You say, is, 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 are you pregnant? I say, no, I'm not pregnant. But I just want to eat it. Why? Lack of spiritual values. When was it the last time you prayed? Fast. You know, Jesus said, when ye fast. He didn't say, if you. He said, when, that means it is expected that we fast. He also said, when ye pray. Matthew 6, 17. Fasting is hard. See, I will not lie to you. I have lived a fasted life. But I would rather eat than fast. I would rather eat than fast. I will rather eat than fast. Especially when my wife cooks fried rice. I, I don't want to fast. I don't want to fast. Why, why are we fasting? Oluwati, but God has heard. Why? Because it's easier. But you don't always need what is easy. You need a little stretch for your destiny to be attained. Number five, give generously. People who are spiritually lethargic, they don't give to God's kingdom. They don't give in church. No tithe, no offering, nothing. They say, what are they even using our tithe and offering to do? I don't believe you can say that in this church. Because see what I'm using it to do. That's why I'm sweating like this. Look at them everywhere. Listen. What you love, you put your money in. As a young boy, when they send our income from home, our, it's not salary because we did not work, our stipend from home, our allowee from home, we already know with the part we set apart that it is Megida Labor that will collect it from us. Why? Because we pay. Those days, it was 13 era, 15 era. Champions League is 15 era. Premiership is 13 era. Nigeria was good one time. 13 era, 15 era. We stayed there and we watched football. Somebody, those days, somebody said, You want to kill yourself for Manchester United? Uh, do, you, do you have investment in the club? I said, I do. Every money I pay here, this man uses it for subscription. The subscription gets to DSTV. This is DSTV bought the subscription. It's my money. I have original jersey. I pay. Why? I love the club. I put my money there. Do you love God? Put your money there. Put your money in the kingdom. Put your money in kingdom agenda. Find a place where the truth of God's word is being taught and invest financially in that place. Not every time take it, receive it. You to give. Spiritual lethargy. Somebody say, Pastor, you don't understand. How much are we earning? That's this pastor. They like to take from the poor. A woman came, dropped two mites. Jesus said she gave the most. It is not what you give, it is from what you gave from. What do you have? Somebody will give a million naira. Church will celebrate. Somebody will give 100 million. God, church will celebrate and God will say nonsense. Why? Because God looks at how much the person has. Somebody will give 100 naira and Jesus will say, that is the best person that gave. Do you love Jesus? Give. You have a boyfriend. She's doing bad day. You don't have a job. You borrow money and buy gifts. When I say things like that, I like to keep quiet. So I sing, sing. You lose your love, you lose your money. <laughs> there are things I've seen ladies do. They call ladies and be borrowing money to buy gift for a guy. <laughs> Number six. 
Number seven. I'll give you two more. Now skip some. Don't worry. I'm saying this to the people at the back. Give them number seven. They'll get it many when I write my book. It's not six now. It's number seven. Give them seven. <laughs> number seven. Remember your first works and do it again. When you first gave your life to Christ, before life happened to you, what did you used to do? That's what you should do again. Remember your first works and do it again. Dear friends, I know of no better way to regain fervency than to take a spiritual journey backwards. Consider the height from which you are falling. The time you are on fire, what did you normally do? What does your spiritual schedule look like? Sharpen again that edge. If it was prayer, pray some more. If it is fasting, fast some more. If it's reading the word, read the word again. Revelation chapter 2 verses 4 to 5 through those that. My time is up. Number 8. Pursue always fresh baptism in the spirit. Give me Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 to 20 in the New Living Translation. Are you there? Ephesians 5. Are we there? 18 to 20. Is it on the screen? 18 to 20. New Living Translation. I'll just read it here. Don't be drunk with wine. Because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs among yourself. And making music to the Lord in your heart. And give thanks for everything to God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Desire to drink again. And again. And again. Of the water of life. Refuse to be satisfied. With yesterday's oil. Song I sing again and again. New anointing. For a new day. Oh Lord. Let it fall. New anointing for a new day. Oh Lord, let it fall. I just want newness. I won't go on yesterday's oil. It won't get today's job done. Still oil won't get it done. Anoint me with fresh oil, oh God. Exalt my head like the head of a unicorn. Pursue God. In prayer meetings, don't check your phone. In worship meetings, lie before him and worship him. In our pourings, let the Lord pour himself again and again. Give me Ezekiel chapter 47 verses 1 to 5. This is how we end. Ezekiel 47 verses 1 to 5. In the New King James Version, Ezekiel 47. Are you there? Ezekiel 47 Verses 1 to 5. Then he brought me to the back, to the door of the temple. And there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. I think there's water under the temple today too, right? Glory to God. <laughs> flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the front of the temple faced the east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple. Your right side, water is flowing. Everything is scriptural. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, and the water flows from the right side of the temple, south of the altar. Praise the Lord. Amen. He brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside of the outer gateway that faces the east. And there was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits and he brought me through the waters. The water came to my ankles. You see that? That means it went deeper. And as it went deeper, the water came to the ankles. The Bible says, and it brought 
brought me through the water came up to my ankles. Uh, again, he measured 1,000 uh, and brought me through the waters. Uh, it means there is a thousand farther you can go with God. Uh, your spirit man can press in 1,000 more. You go 1,000 more, you get into deeper waters. Uh, you go 1,000 more, there is yet deeper waters. Uh, the first thousand got to his ankles. Uh, and then he said, and I went in more. Then the water came to my knees. Uh, and then he said, Lord, I love this. Uh, because you see, when it's on your ankle, you can still make decisions with the Spirit. Uh, when it's on your knees, uh, you can still make decisions with the Holy Spirit. Uh, but something is about to happen. Uh, Bible says again, he measured 1,000 uh, and brought me through. Uh, the water came to my waist. Uh, I love the testimony of the water coming to the head. Uh, but this water came to the waist. Uh, and he said, oh Lord, I see one more. Press in some more. Pray in tongues some more. Somebody cry out some more. Somebody worship some more. Somebody press in deeper some more. Somebody say, Lord, I love you. I love you. I worship you. But I want more. I want more. And the Bible says again. Somebody say again. Again, he measure 1,000. And it was a river I could not cross. For the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. A river that could not be crossed. There is another measure. Another measure is in praying. Another measure is in pressing on to God. Another measure is saying, Lord, I am grateful for your anointing thus far. I'm grateful for how far you have helped me. I'm grateful for how far you have brought me. But I know there is another measure. There is yet a deeper measure. You can make decisions with the Spirit when it is waste level. But when it becomes a water level, the Holy Spirit begins to take you wherever the tides will go. The Holy Spirit begin to take you wherever the tides will go. Is there somebody in this house this morning? We say Lord, the Spirit will take me wherever He wills. The Spirit will take me wherever the tides will lead. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done struggling with the Holy Ghost. I'm done. When I pray, I sleep. I'm done. There needs to be a resurgence, a refire in my spirit, man. I want another measure. I'm ready to go a thousand cubits more. I'm ready to go a thousand steps more. I'm ready to go further with God. If that is you, will you break out in prayers? Somebody begin to pray in the spirit. Can I have intercessors? Somebody begin to pray. Somebody say there is more. There is more. Another measure. Another measure. Another measure. Another measure. Another measure. We've got seven minutes. Uh, seven minutes. Uh, somebody press it. Aya karaka tamara tamara. Omrata kaya mara tamara dasha. Omrata tamara tamaya dasha. Eto rata tamaya dasha. Eprata tamara. Shubika basha. Eprata prahaya. Ovene shenwa. Olo broko sopani. Another measure. I'm gonna press it to the bar. Efana fana fana. Omrata ta 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 ta. It's I. Don't get tired. He must keep that spiritual energy. But turn out. There is deeper. There is deeper. Another measure. Another measure. Another measure. If you can't stand, will you stand? It's okay to sweat now. If you can stand, just stand. It's okay to sweat now. 
I want to give you five minutes to say, Lord, I'm kicking out lethargy. Lord, I'm kicking out that ailment, that sickness, that malady. It's not mine anymore. I'm kicking it out. I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing after you. Intercessors pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Gabala da 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 Gabala da